Hello and welcome back to another YouTube video. Hi, I'm Speeder. Okay. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is my second blank screen video. And I realized I should probably put a thumbnail <laughs> on uh, these videos. So I'm just going to do the same one for each one. Um, and I just kind of took a picture where I'm sitting right now. Uh, but I added a blanket in the background so that at least some of the background stuff would get blocked off. Uh, but yeah. In today's recording, I will be talking about Season 2, Episode 6, I believe, of The Dragon Prince. Yes, Episode 6. Um, I guess Book 2, Episode 6. Whatever. Um, and it is... Uh... <clears throat> Heart of a Titan, which is part two of Breaking the Seal, which is what we talked about last time. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. I haven't been posting weekly lately, and I apologize for that. Uh, I've been trying to post weekly, but I've been having a lot of health issues lately. I got sick twice. <laughs> Um, I was having growing pains, um, and so I had to stay downstairs for an entire day, which happened to be an uploading day. Um, and last week, I fell off a of bed on my shoulder and jammed it, so I could barely move my arm. And just yesterday, uh, I, being myself, fell down the stairs. Twice. <laughs> yeah. So my back is pretty busted, but I went to the chiropractor. Um, so now I just have to ice it. Have Formula 303, which is a natural muscle relaxant. Because uh, I don't like to take medications and stuff. So it's just natural. Mostly. Um, <clears throat> and... You know, that this way I can walk around semi-normally and sit down without it hurting. It's, yeah. I've missed, like, two and a half weeks of school. It's, it's really not good. But I am trying to keep up on my schoolwork as much as I can. But anyways, here I am, recording a video. Uh, today's date is November 30th, 2021, so it's the last day of November. Cool. Um, man, it's the last day of November. That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so if you haven't listened to one of these videos before or seen one of these videos before, uh, where I do reviews on the Dragon Prince. Basically, I just go through everything that happens in the episode and kind of talk about my thoughts on them throughout. Some things I don't go into super deep into. Either one, they're less interesting to me, or two, I want to do a separate video on them. I've encountered a couple things that I do want to do that with once I have finished uh, the series. So, yeah. I have seen the series before, all the way through, um, seasons one through three, because that is all that has come out at this time, and yeah, after I finish this show, uh, reviews, um, I plan to start on my all-time favorite show, Avatar The Last Airbender, so, yeah, that'll be coming, yeah, probably sometime next year, so yeah. Whew. Okay, so this video, oh, sorry, this episode starts out um, <clears throat> where the previous one left off. So Callum has just broken the seal of the letter that his stepfather, King Harrow, left for him, and uh, Viren is just about to continue telling his story to this council of kings and queens. I don't remember. I think it's a pentarchy. Something. I think it's a summit of the pentarchy. I think that's what it was. Yeah, 
but he's explaining this story of what happened in the past when they went to try and save 100,000 people by killing a magma titan, which, as I talked about in the last video, um, I don't think this is, was... It, <sighs> This could be either, depending on your perspective, this is either ethical or extremely unethical to go... If you look at it from an outside perspective, it's a very difficult answer to question. Question to answer. I can't speak, apparently. Because, um, I mean, they're going into a land that, they're, that is not their own to seek out a specific creature that they know nothing about other than the fact that they can help them. They go and they kill it to save themselves and a hundred thousand people. Right? This creature didn't agree to it. It could be intelligent. It could have a family, and if it doesn't have a family, it could be the, very much the last of its kind, um, as Queen Sarai um, talked to Harrow about. Uh, in the previous flashbacks. <clears throat> um, so there's all that issue. Uh, but then at the same time, they are saving 100,000 people. So, personally, I don't think it's an ethical decision. They could have found another way that didn't require the sacrifice of a creature that they know nothing about. But that's just my opinion. It's not like I have taken an ethics course. <laughs> Actually, I know nothing about ethics. <laughs> but, anyways. So, continuing. Uh, at the start of this, we have Callum opening up the letter. And... Harrow has written in here uh, that he's going to share with Callum a secret, a lie, and... something else. I don't remember what the other one was. Um... And he does. So, let me go back to Viren, and he has taken a pause in his story so that um, one of the kings can go use the bathroom. And then he launches back into it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. That clipped. One second. Sorry, I forgot to mute that before I coughed. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, at the end of the previous flashback, we had, in, in the previous episode, we had the Magma Titan waking up after they started, like, breaking into it. Uh, attempting to harvest the heart. Which, if the Magma Titan had already been dead, I can see why this might be okay. Because then they can just take what they need. But since it's, it's really not dead, then it becomes unethical again. And even so, they know nothing about, like, this species. And if, if it is intelligent, then what if it has, like, a, a ceremony that it does with dead creatures of their kind? Like, what if disturbing the body is... Something that they don't want you to do. <laughs> then it suddenly becomes unethical again, even if it is dead. You know nothing about this creature. So, and it did you no harm. So what right do you have to just march into its home and kill it for your own gain? That's really not okay. <laughs> the, honestly, the, the humans are the villains in this story they are, uh, which, which makes sense, but, yeah, I mean, at the beginning, you see the Moonshadow Elves as the villains, but then, as you get a little bit farther into it, you can see, oh yeah, technically they are villains in a way, but in truth, it's the humans, the humans are the villains, in fact, everyone's kind of a villain, really, the only people who aren't villains are the ones who are attempting to solve things peacefully, or just doing what they know to be right. So, like, Viren is a villain. He is undoubtedly 
the villain um, at, at this point. Obviously, season four hasn't come out yet. But honestly, I think that the squad, as I refer to them, Cal, Amarela, Ezrin, Zim, all of them, I think they're really the only... I, th I think they're really the neutral party. Because, I mean, they grew up with these beliefs, and Amarela grew up with her beliefs, Cal and Ezrin grew up with their beliefs. But honestly, I think they're kind of the neutral party. Because they see things from both sides, because they've combined their efforts. So they can see things from both sides, and they can make... An ethical decision and that ethical decision that they've made is to have humans and elves working together to bring a stolen dragon the dragon the dragon prince back home to his mother ethical decision <laughs> but anyways I've, I've talked about this for too long so let me continue. Okay, so the Magma Titan wakes up. <clears throat> Goodness, that clipped? That was like barely even. Holy crap. Are my coughs really that loud? <laughs> that was weird. Anyways, maybe I need to lower the volume a bit. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, so, yeah. Magma Titan wakes up. They begin to attack it. Callum is reading the letter from his father. And so I'll, I'll talk about the, what happens with the Magma Titan first. So, Viren, while he's telling the story, he's talking to Queen Anya, um about her parents, the Queens of Durin. <laughs> Obviously, that's that's why he's telling this story, is to try to convince Anya to join him. And... He's like, well, this seems like a story of epic battles, it is, in truth, a story of sacrifice and love. <laughs> and I'm technically inclined to think that this is true. When in reality, it, it's it's not. Because if you hadn't gone there in the first place, then those specific sacrifices wouldn't have happened. And if you had found another way, you may have still been able to save lives without those specific sacrifices of a magma titan that you know nothing about, as well as three queens, as we'll discover later in the episode. This results in the death of three queens. Queens of Durin and Calum and Ezrin's mother. <sighs> Queen Sarai. <clears throat> okay. I feel like... Viren and Harrow. And however much I hate to say it, probably also the queens of Durin are the ones who, who knew that they were doing something wrong here. In the moral gray area, I guess. Whereas some of the soldiers and Maya and Sarai are just there to help and protect. Which is good. But I need to stop talking for ages about ethical decisions, even though... <laughs> That's, that's honestly the main thing I have to talk about with this episode, even though I, I love this episode. But let me continue. So, yeah, they start attacking the Magma Titan, and they are throwing spears at it, they're throwing these, like, chain anchor things at it. I, I don't remember what they're called. Um... If they even gave them a name. I'm sure they're called something, I just don't know. <clears throat> See, that cough didn't clip. What the heck? Okay. Yeah. So... Eventually, they realize that they need to aim for the cracks like in between the rocky armor that this that this titan has 
And so they start doing that, but it fails until they realize that they they just need to aim for the place where they had already cracked. Open the Magma Titan. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, I had to cough there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so they end up doing this successfully. Uh, they kill the Titan. Um, they, so they, they hit the place where they originally cracked, and they push the, the, um, anchor thing, whatever it is they use to, to shoot it, uh, over the cliff. And then, finally, Amaya and Sarai work together to take the final shot with a spear. And so they end up killing the Titan and getting the heart. So then we go back to Callum reading his father's letter, Harrow's letter. Um, and Harrow begins talking about something um, that is dang accurate. <laughs> um... So he starts talking to, to Callum, he's like, here's the lie, okay? So, history's great lie is that we achieve things, and this is his words, not mine, but basically, the summary of what he says, he's like, the people that your advisors, your court, those people will tell you a lie. They will tell you that it was the great battles and military victories and things like that that were important and kind of, I guess, helped history, saved history, saved the world, right? And he says, well, in reality, this isn't the case. <clears throat> Goodness gracious, why do you do that? Okay. Um, but yeah, he says that in truth, it. Goodness, I can't speak. Think of my words first, then speak. <clears throat> so, he says that in truth it is love and unity and all of this kind of thing that really is the thing that helped the most save his... I guess, I, I don't know how to explain it. He says it way better than I do. You should go watch this episode, <laughs> rather than listening to me explain it. Watch the episode first, then listen to me explaining it. And then you you will understand <laughs> what I am talking about. Because I probably am spouting nonsense right now. Okay. Where was I? Yes. So, if any of you have ever read the series called The Stormlight Archive or The Wave Kings, whatever, by Brandon Sanderson, uh, you probably know of a character named Dalinar 
named Dalinar. Okay, he's one of the main characters of the series. I'm not going to give any spoilers here, but there's a guy named Dalinar who is a main character. And I'm just saying, every time I see Harrow, especially, like, flashback Harrow, and, like, first couple episodes Harrow, well, I guess there wasn't really another Harrow, but basically when I see Harrow, especially being his, like, political self, I think... Dalinar. <laughs> or I guess even, even Gavilar. Um, Galilar, whatever. I haven't read the fourth book yet, but, yeah, I've read the first three. Galilar, Galilar, I don't, I don't remember which one it was. But, yeah, Dalinar or his brother. Um, I always think of those two whenever I see Har Harrow. I'm like, Dalinar? Present-day Dalinar, not past Dalinar. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's just my thing. I think those two are, are pretty similar overall. <sighs> Anyways. So. This is also the time when we find out that, well, I guess we, we probably should have inferred it, but that Ezrin will become king. Um... Now that Harrow is gone, at some point, Ezrin will become king, and Callan will be, as he says, his closest friend and advisor. Because, I mean, they're brothers. I guess it makes sense. <clears throat> um. But, yeah. I, j I think that's, that's, that's an interesting thing, and we, we may see more on that in the future. Anyways. Okay. So, continuing the flashback, they are taking the heart from the Magma Titan, and Viren is talking to Harrow, and he's like, we need to lo leave the wounded behind to be able to go forward. And this is another one of those situations when I really hate Viren. Because I'm, obviously he's the villain and all, but like, I really hate Viren. Because he's shown to be extremely self-centered. Like, he, he pretends to be selfless and, and kind. When he thinks that it is the best way to do things, but he's always gonna be the one who wants all of this politicalness and this, like, all, wants all the diplomacy or whatever. Diplomacy, that's the word. Once, once all the diplomacy is out of the way and it doesn't work, and the being kind to other people doesn't work, then he will go to other measures. First, he will first go to dark magic. That is his first go-to. And then he will resort to evil and manipulation. Right? Which, which is pretty similar to dark magic. Dark magic is evil. As you can see, you're literally squeezing the magic out of an innocent living creature to your own ends. So yes, obviously, this is evil. And if, if people can't see that, I am kind of worried. Kind of worried. It is literally called dark magic. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he starts with he starts with the diplomacy. Or, yeah, he starts with the diplomacy and kindness and a supposed selflessness and then he resorts to either one dark magic or to manipulation and then he just goes pure evil. <laughs> right? <clears throat> So in this moment, he he's trying the diplomacy, right? He's like, "Hey, Harrow, we kind of need to go back. These people can make it back on their own. We need to do this in order to save other people." And then 
once Harrow says no, even when Sarai and Amaya agreed, because Amaya is one of the ones who was injured, that's how she got her scar on her face, um, Viren, when he hears that Harrow says no, he gets angry. He starts kind of getting mad at him. He shouts just a little bit, and eventually he gives up. Luckily, he didn't go to any farther lengths at this point, but he does do this. Because he is always trying to achieve what he thinks is right, which is basically just his own ends. <laughs> yeah. The unfortunate thing is he thinks that he's actually doing the right thing, which is a little bit disturbing. That, that's always interesting with villains, is when they actually think that they're doing the right thing. <laughs> Recording. What do you need? Um, let me mute real quick. Sorry about that. That was just dinner talk. <laughs> Anyways, yes, since it's difficult for me to walk up and down the stairs, I am getting my dinner up here. And I'm not the one serving it this time. It's my mother. But anyways, so, sorry about that. Continuing. Um... They do end up bringing the, the wounded with them, as well as the heart. And they are almost to the other side when the sun has begun to rise, and Thunder, as they call him, the king of the dragons, comes out of the sky and is about to begin attacking them. Now, Harrow is about to go and fight him, even though they're the ones trespassing on his land that they were kicked out that they were kicked out of for using dark magic, which makes sense because in order to use dark magic, you literally have to kill magical creatures, right? <laughs> Goodness gracious, y'all, do you not get this, people? Anyways. So, before he can go out there, uh, the Queens of Durin, um, who I yeah, don't know the names of anymore, I don't know if they ever say their names, actually, uh, we just know that they're, uh, Anya's moms, and that they are the Queens of Durin. Um, so, they ride out on horseback to face off against Thunder, and they begin fighting him. Uh, and Viren, being Viren, um, is doing his thing that he does originally, diplomacy, supposed selflessness, right? I, I've just seen this as, like, a huge pattern, so I kind of wanted to talk about it. Is that he, he kind of goes through those three stages, diplomacy, then either dark magic, or anger, or both, and then just evil. <clears throat> but anyways, so, he goes out there, trying to be selfless, trying to help, um, because he sees that he can help, so he uses magic, not dark magic this time, he just uses magic from his primal stone, which was then given to Claudia, which was then given to Callum, which was then broken to patch the dragon, right? Sim. And, at least I assume it's the same primal stone, it would Makes sense that this was the same primal stone as Rayla says that these are extremely rare uh, objects, which would make sense since they're primal storms trapped inside of a ball. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of want to know more about primal storms. 
Like, what sets primal storms apart from normal storms other than the fact that they're super powerful? How do primal storms happen? Can you summon a primal storm other than by breaking a primal stone? <laughs> or is it even called a primal storm? I don't remember. Honestly. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, so Viren runs down there, he traps um Thunder, as they call him, with a spell called Aspero Frigus, um which I assume means freeze breath <laughs> because aspero as we know is a wind breath spell it's a wind spell um and it allows you to like breathe out like a ton of air that creates like this wind uh, so i assume this basically means freeze breath or something like that uh and he he draws the rune and he traps thunder his head uh, with Aspero the Freakus. Then, the Queens of Durin, saying this is an opportunity, they both go and say, for Anya, which I think is awesome. I think of their daughter in this moment. That's great. Um, and they are going to attack him, but then he, he breaks free of this ice, and he ends up blasting them, and they die. So, Viren begins kind of running, slash, fighting, uh, Thunder, so King of the Dragons, and Sarai, Harrow's wife, the queen, Callum and Ezrin's mom, she sees what's going on, realizes that if Viren dies, this is all for nothing, because he's the only one who can use this heart of a titan to save them. Um, she then goes down on horseback and goes to save Viren. And then we get a shot when she gets down there. She holds out her hand to him. And this is pretty obviously the shot um, that is depicted in the statue of Sarai that we see in season one, where she is holding her hand down, smiling in the statue. She's not really smiling here. She's on horseback. She has her spear in one hand, and she's looking down on a injured Viren and offering him help. No doubt this was described by Viren to create this statue. <clears throat> Sorry, I need water. <sighs> okay. So, basically, her and Viren are riding on horseback, and they are super close to um, the breach, the border, um, and Thunder gives out one more blast of Thunder. Or, not Thunder. One more blast of lightning, and it shocks them off the horse, blasts them off the horse, um, hitting Sarai in one direction, Bjorn in the other. Oh, the poor horse, which is definitely dead. <laughs> they also lost three horses today, probably more. Um, and he goes over to Sarai, and he's like, Come on, we have to run, we gotta go. He's distracted, he's going away. Come on. And then he realizes that she's dying. Um, and so he's there, as he says, when she takes her last breath. Which. Yeah. Um, and, and we will see later in the show. I'm not going to say anything more about it. That Viren, though he starts out this kind of selfless, going down there to save. He then immediately, immediately becomes selfish again. But I'll get that into that much later when we go back into this and we see a couple of shots in this episode that are kind of Easter eggs. They kind of refer to things that we will learn 
the future. But I'm not going to go into any detail for that because I don't want to give any spoilers to those who haven't seen it. Which, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're watching or, I guess, listening to this because why would you want spoilers? <laughs> This is a fantastic show, and if you haven't seen it, you should totally go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's awesome. Love it. You should watch it. It is phenomenal. But, anyways, so, back to Helm's letter. Um, so, Harrow's giving him more and more advice. I don't really remember what all of it was, but he also tells uh, Callum that the last words that his wife... Sarai told him were I'll see you on the other side which this line is given right after Sarai says to Harrow I'll see you on the other side right before she goes down to rescue Viren and this is when you think oh no ah this is how she dies I feel like they, they gave a pretty big red herring at the beginning of this um, when they talk about the sacrifice and stuff with the Magma Titan, that you think that all three, um, well, at least that, that Sarai is going to die to the Magma Titan, when in truth, no, she dies to Thunder, the King of the Dragons. <clears throat> so, yeah. Then we we see a defeated yet also victorious um, remaining team of of soldiers from the party that went out to slay the Magma Titan coming back with a heart. We see that it does in fact save a hundred thousand people. I'm still not saying it's ethical, um, <clears throat> and that it brings much good and much fertility and food and health to the land and it also talks about the sacrifice of the three queens Queen Zidurin and Queen Sarai I really okay I'm gonna have to look this up what names oh Okay, tell me. Good old fandom.com. <laughs> what are their names? If they have them. Come on. Queens Annika and Neha, or Neha, I don't know how to say that, but I'm pretty sure the, the first one is Annika. So those are their names, if, if you want to see them, you can look on uh, Dragon Prince fandom wiki, but I don't want to try and pronounce the other one because I'm afraid I'm going to offend someone. Nia, maybe? Nia, Nia, I, I don't know, but the first one I'm pretty sure is Annika. I, I know an Annika. They're not someone close to me, but I, I used to know an Annika. That's why I say I know an Annika, because I wouldn't reveal the name of someone I know very closely. So I'm pretty sure it's Annika. <clears throat> but anyways, so... You see that there were monuments built in the the name and image of these three queens, which I think is pretty cool, honestly. Because, well, I mean, even if their decision may not have been perfectly ethical, they did, in fact, save 100,000 people. 
And then we see Harrow, he, he's grieving, and he has to tell Callum, and this moment, every single time, it makes me cry. Just a little bit, like little tears, tears come to my eyes in this moment. And he comes, he's, he goes to Callum, and he says the words, I want to talk to you about life, and how sometimes there are changes you don't expect. And why does this make me cry? Because that is the exact same words that he that Callum tells to Ezrin when he's trying to tell him that Harrow is dead. And oh my gosh. Uh, when I first watched this, I was sobbing. Goodness gracious, why are you clipping so much? Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna lower that sound on just a little bit but anyways so yeah it's just the fact that Callum used the exact same words trying to tell Ezra and it kind of shows how much this scene had an effect on Callum because he remembered those exact words and I guess this is the way he knows how to tell people because that was the way he was told um, that his mother had passed away <sighs> Also, we have we have a great moment uh, during the letter flashbacks. Um, the hero talks about and he's like sometimes those moments of purest strength seem like weakness to those who don't know better. I think that's that's a great line. And also the fact that it is why are you doing that stupid thing? Oh my gosh. Okay. I am attempting to lower the sound enough so that it will stop freaking clipping. <laughs> oh my gosh. I apologize for that, and I'm sorry your ears, and mine also, because I can hear my voice somewhat through these headphones when it's really loud. <clears throat> but anyways, so... Yeah, I, I just think it's a great... It's great that the, the shot, the scene that we see uh, when he says this is also that it's it's Callum and Ezrin sword fighting, and Ezrin gets hurt, and Callum goes down immediately and tries to help him. I think that that is, in truth, a moment of what he was talking about. I just wanted to mention that. So, then he's like, so, after that, we go back to the letter, and... Arrow's like, so what, you might be wondering what this secret is that I have to share with you. And he says something interesting that I still want to know more about. Though I'm not going to say how much we learn about it in the future. He says to go upstairs right now, because he thinks comms into Banjo Lodge, into the game room, and find a cube. We'll find a cube with mysterious symbols on it. And obviously, as we know from Season 1, Callum went uh, to the Bantha Lodge and he retrieved this very cube. So he has it with him. And he said, this is the thing, this is something called the Key of Erevos. And Erevos was a wizard um, elf. Archmage Erevos, Erevos. And he was a master of all six primal sources. Like, I didn't know this was possible <laughs> until this moment, that you could have more than one, like, I guess, Arcanum or connection to Primal Sources. And it kind of makes me wonder <laughs> about some things in the future that I will talk about. Um, yeah, but at this moment, uh, this is all we know. That is something called the Key of Erevos. And that it is very important. And of course, we had the super secret special bonus secret Bait loves belly rubs, which is adorable, and I love Bait forever. <laughs> and I feel bad for him a lot. Um, but yeah. Anyways, so, Viren, after he finishes his story, talks to Anya, and she's like, 
And he's like, so as you can see, this has worked in the past, and your mothers, they would have joined. Nanya, being the absolute best, is like, I agree, yes, my mothers probably would have joined you. But I will not, because I will not send a million men to die in battle to repay the debt of a hundred thousand lives that are saved. Yes! <laughs> Good. Good plan, Anya. Good plan. Be the best queen ever, because I love you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, this thing clips so easily. Anyways, I apologize for your ears again. <laughs> Warning headphone users. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, I just love this, and this is another example of your doing this exact same thing. You start with diplomacy, and when they all say no, oh, sorry, when Anya says no, and the others refuse to help him, he gets angry, he yells at them, he calls them cowards, and he storms out. So he resorted to anger immediately after he was rejected with diplomacy. Diplomacy. Diplomacy, yeah. So I, I just see that's a pattern for Viren. That's all. Um, but anyways, I love this episode, and oh my gosh, I didn't even talk about another part. Sorry. I haven't talked about the whole episode, and I am so sorry. Rayla also has a part in this episode. Um... She has a small kind of internal struggle. She's she's talking to the captain of the ship, uh, Villas or what? Villas, I I don't even know what his name is at this point. Villas with a silent D or something. And okay, I just said and really loudly. That thing. Are you freaking serious? Ugh. Anyways. But, yeah, she she's questioning whether or not she really wants to be an assassin. She's never killed anyone. She doesn't really want to do that. And so, Phyllis, or whatever his name is, <laughs> um, gives her some advice, which I think is really good. That life is like a river. You don't know where it will take you. All you know is that... You can control yourself, not the world around you. And this is awesome advice that you can actually use in real life. And I love that. So, thank you for life advice from this, or whatever his name is. I don't remember. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think this is an awesome episode. Uh, again, Claudia and Soren aren't in it. It had some pretty good character moments, especially that, that hug at the end with Callum and Ezrin. And Callum's like, I love you, bro. I love you. That's great. I love this episode. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I love a great backstory episode. It's one of my favorites. Um, like my, my favorite, it, this isn't a backstory episode, but like ones that have large amounts of character development or backstory episodes. Like My, my favorite episode in Dragon Prince is the finale of Season 2, which we'll get to in a little bit, in a few videos. Um, and my favorite episode in Avatar The Last Airbender is an episode called The Southern Raiders from Season 3, which is another example of this. So I just love these kinds of episodes, um, and I very much enjoyed this one. Um, if you like this link screen stuff, I'm probably going to keep doing it, uh, just with a thumbnail. Uh, please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts about it, uh, in comments. Uh, I've noticed that comments are, for the most part, staying intact now, at least on Keep of the Books and Keep of the Games, especially Keep of the Games. Um, I will have to double check on that again, but, as far as I know, they're staying, for the most part, up. So that is great. Uh, but please let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, I know there are at least a few people who watch. So, yeah, that is all I have for today. And once again, this is a very long video. I guess I don't know if y'all like that or not, but yeah. 
that is all I have for today. For you guys, I will see you guys next time. Bye.